This episode of Nuff Said is brought to you by Tweaked Audio. To get awesome headphones, go to tweakedaudio.com and use the coupon code SOUTHGATE to get 30% off, free shipping, and a lifetime warranty. Or you can get there through the link on our website, southgatemediagroup.com. The recording has started. Hello, friends, and welcome once again to Super Connectivity. I am your host, Charlie the Professor Asa, and with me, as always, is the blue-eyed mama from the Burger Pits. Fill, fill me in, Perch. That is he. Oh, welcome, welcome, dear Philip. So many things to discuss this week. So little, little, little time. Um... I do want to talk real quickly because I have been promising our listeners I would be live tweeting um, DuckTales every Monday night at 7 o'clock Eastern Time. And I have missed it the last couple weeks. And last week was a lore-intensive episode. But a lore-intensive episode (laughs) that may well upend all of the DuckTales universe. Oh. So, uh, not to get too spoilery, the... Thank you, Philip. Last episode, Monday at 7 o'clock on Disney XD, 7 o'clock Eastern Time. Well, 7 o'clock wherever you happen to live, but Eastern Time specifically for me. We saw the quote-unquote first adventure, which clearly isn't the first adventure because it is, is, is established with it that... Scrooge McDuck has had other adventures Mm -hmm. from which he, his treasure hunting adventures had built his fortune in that episode. He um, gets Della and Donald first associated with him. Interestingly enough, Donald is very articulate in this, suggesting that his inarticulateness is something that maybe has developed later in life or possibly as the result of something not being... Something that occurred on the adventure. So that, because I was actually waiting for that, this adventure, where I thought that there was going to be something that was going to happen that was going to make him far less articulate. But anyway, so to sum up, clearly whatever is happening here is happening in our current timeline sometime in the 90s. Hmm. Based on the ages of Della and Donald, their cultural cues, their cultural cues are very 90s, very grunge. Because they're supposed to be, like, young teenagers yeah. in this. Um, but this also gives us what is ostensibly the origin of Fowl, oh. which is our great villainous threat this season and the last few seasons. The problem is, dear sir, hmm. that previously in the secret case files of Agent 22, we have a... Oh, sorry, sorry. The confidential case files of Agent 22. We have another introduction between Beakley and Scrooge that seems to take place in the 60s, 30 years before, when Fowl seems to be active in that Black Heron is a threaten it. And in fact, I don't think Black Heron had lost her arm in that one yet. And she has lost her arm by this one. Hmm. Additionally, in this episode, there's a reference by Scrooge that he knows Bradley from his Christmas party. But it is also suggested this is the origin of Fowl, which opens up this possibility that Fowl existed before Bradley thinks he founded Fowl. Hmm. Um, which is sort of that whole I'm taking you to see the real Mandarin kind of plot twist we may be building towards in DuckTales. So if those of you who remember Hail to the King, it was a short, you cannot find it on Disney Plus, which is weird. It's always weird when Disney starts doing that little Ministry of Truth thing. It's like, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't recall that ever existing. Unless something's going to happen in Shang-Chi. Well, exactly. That we're, that they don't want to tip the hat too early. 
So that that short is supposed to be on the Blu-ray for Thor The Dark World, and it no longer is. Ew. When you go into the extras for Thor The Dark World. If you go to the other ones, you can see the other shorts. But um, for Thor The Dark World, you don't get the short of Hail to the King. So should- that is an interesting thing. But I think they're setting up something. And I think that is going to be the reveal that I have predicted that, in fact, Shere Khan is the founder of Fowl. Mm. And for what it's worth, Shere Khan has a relationship with the vultures, of which Bradley is. And there is even this implication that maybe Bradley is going to do a face turn by the end. Um, Because we see Bradley starts out in Shush. He is an accountant for Shush. And he creates his... Um, organization for world law enforcement, or it basically, where it is this idea of let's let's uh, you know let's steal things before people can can cause trouble by stealing them. Essentially, is the idea. And then you know, Black Heron is the one who puts the F on the business card to say, call it foul. The fiendish organization for world larceny, because um, Black Heron wants him to embrace his super villainy. So, it's very interesting what we're working with here. Maybe this is all retcons. Maybe they're going to act like it never happened and ignore that we've already met Fowl. Or they're going to try and retcon it in another way. They're going to make it work uh, timeline-wise. But right now, I'm looking at it. I'm saying there is something wrong with this timeline. And I can tell that Disney isn't letting me go back to the Gummy Bears episode. I can't go back. I cannot find the secret case files of Agent 22 in either Hulu or Disney Plus right now. I could probably buy it somewhere, but it's like, oh, you're making this hard for me, aren't you, Disney Disney, uh, Disney Corporation? So, mm-hmm. yes, I do think that we are building towards Shere Khan as the true master of foul. Uh, Bradley thinks he's the master of foul, but he is, as always, just an accountant. Bum, bum, bum. My second deep fan theory along with uh, Launchpad McQuack is the secret father of the triplets, which we'll get to later. I was waiting for a Launchpad McQuack cameo in that with Della and Donald. Mm. But they did not give us one. Which again makes me think, why didn't you give us one? But, um, but you got me with that Hail to the King thing. I might have to go in there and watch that because I have Thor. Was it Thor of the Dark World on Blu-ray? So can't erase that. <laughs> he can't erase. It. As Lilith says, get that hard media. Mm-hmm. They can never take that away. Um, but yeah, but in Hail to the King, you know, the idea is is that there is a real Mandarin, and oh, yeah. the guy who was pretending to be the Mandarin wasn't really the Mandarin. And that's what we're going to get theoretically in Shang Chi. Oh yeah, it'd be interesting, especially if they have the Shang Chi versus the not Fu Manchu because we don't own the rights to him anymore, but the character that we call Fu Manchu now in the Shang Chi comic books. That there is a conflict between these two, essentially supervillain superpowers, and Shang Chi has to sort of defeat them both. So that'll be interesting as a story that they're going to tell there. Um, anyway, uh, that's exciting. Oh, yeah. Uh, we talked about, uh, sure, we didn't really get as deep into it as we did on our messages, um, with the idea of the new Black Panther information. Oh, yeah. And how Shuri is going to be represented in that. And it is this complex issue of will Shuri be exploring something more? Than just her tech. I, I know you think that she should skip the 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 chemistry and the organic uh, qualities of that to build herself her own tech suit. Um, I just think they have the opportunity to set her apart from all the past rulers who are basically all kings. I mean, the only probably what probably only queens of Wakanda going back were probably only the ones married to the king, right? Uh, I think that it's implied in. The first one that there were at least one or two mm. female Black Panther. I think there were some women yeah. when uh, T'Challa goes to the land of the ancestors. Okay. 
So, and I'm, and of course, what is my most excited idea on this is that if she is, so we have a Mexican uh, actor. I believe he's a Mexican actor. He might be Mexican American, but um, who is going? Who is signed on to be yeah. an antagonist in it? Which, of course, just because of my limited thought process, I immediately go to the tarantula. Oh, as an interesting guy, as a character who might be an interesting antagonist. To the, I don't know if they've ever fought. But I know that the tarantula has a history in the drug trade. And if the whole plotline of Shuri is she's trying to recreate the heart-shaped herb, which is lost to us now, um, I wonder if part of that might be searching the world, going to other exotic locations like the Amazon rainforest to find, is there something similar to the heart shaper up there? And that would keep it, <laughs> that, that would keep the story international too again. Cause yeah, blah, tarantulas from South America. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Go to Brazil, yeah. one of the, which is one of the BRICS countries. And what I'm wondering is if they do that, is it possible to bring in Tilda Johnson? Hmm. As the herbalist character. You know what? We might have some of those rights back because I think I heard, I think the Daredevil rights, Disney has the Daredevil oh, yeah, rights no. now. Yeah, Disney has all the rights to the Netflix stuff now. Now it's just, do they want to use them? Yeah. Do they want Luke Cage in there? Do, do they? And I think Tilda Johnson makes a great backdoor for it, especially because she is an herbalist. And she's, and she's going to be the one that's going to be able to bridge the gap for Shuri from the mystical to the scientific, because she is a scientist as well. <gasps> and then, as I suggested, it might be fun if they do a culture ex- exchange, and then suddenly Tilda's like, "Oh wow, robots are cool too." <laughs> what about what if Shuri's working with Tilda Johnson, and then if it is Tarantula, maybe he's getting juiced up, and guess who's juicing him up? Malice, Carl Malice. Oh, Carl Malice. Well. I mean, my, my, my heart would love Carl Malice to show up again. I don't know if he's ever going to do it. He, we might not get Carl Malice again for years. I, I I'm don't just know, saying. man. I mean, I mean, he was in a bunch of comics. I mean, Spider. Oh, no, 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 no. Carl Malice is a character. Oh, he yeah. is like. I mean, you He is my go to. Honestly, I would much rather see Carl Malice than Arnim Zola any day. I was going to say, you need a mad scientist type. I mean, we've already kind of done Zola in the MCU. Let's get Carl Malice. Uh, in here in the movies. Yeah, although I like MCU Zola, I'll Ooh. be honest with you. If we can do digitized uh, MCU Zola, I think that could be awesome. Even with the TV in his chest. Even with the TV, or just TVs anywhere, you know. <laughs> I like the idea that you know I'm not in the TV, you know. I'm in a data bank somewhere else, and that's just my image there. Um, I like that as a concept. Um, Honestly, I, I'm 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 probably uh, far more worried about um, Pat Oswalt uh, is Modoc showing up at some point. I like the idea of Modoc, but it's like I, I I kind of also feel like I don't know if that's the right vehicle for Modoc. It's like we know Modoc is ridiculous. I don't know if we should put him as a show where it's just the ridiculousness. Oh, you know what just hit me. If you yeah. really want to give an enemy for Shuri, she, you know, you know how she, you know, tech is everything to her. If you want to push her to embrace the old ways like T'Challa did, you know what enemy you got to give Shuri? Who? Machine Smith, who can jump his consciousness into any technology. Oh, Machine, well, Machine Smith's awesome. Uh-huh. And I would love to see Machine Smith in there. Um, but Shuri has to, like, figure out a way to fight technology without using technology. Mm-hmm. 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 Oh, that would be interesting. Um, especially if there is this idea that, you know, the reason he can jump from machine to machine is because he's not digitized. Ooh. The worst data, there'd be a hundred copies of him everywhere. You know, and you'd have like, you'd have like, like your old, uh, when, when they brought back old, um, Red Skull, and he's like, what? I've been alive since the forties? What? Well, no, we're, you're, you're just your old memory tapes now. So I'm just a completely different human being? It's like pretty much, well, no, you're the same human being you were at that time. And now, yeah, <laughs> you know, it's just like, which is just a weird concept in general. Huh? You know, it's almost a Dr. Evil, like, help me out here. What, there are mutants now? <laughs> yeah. 
I've been asleep which, for 30 which, years. Which, have humans suddenly start to be gain, mutate, and gain superhuman powers randomly. It's like that already exists in this universe. Um, throw me a bone. I've been in audio in digital tapes for the last 40 years. Uh-huh. <laughs> the 60 years at this point. Anyway, um, but yeah. Uh, I mean, what they're going to explore with that is, I mean, literally, we've got the news that we're working on that. And here's a person that might be in it. And nothing from Marvel, but this is what we're all saying. And it's not from no. um, I got this covered.com, yeah, no. which no. is basically the weekly world news of comics. And I love the weekly world news. But, and, suppo- but, uh, and supposedly the rumor is sure he's going to play a big part, but they haven't, they haven't said how. Well, yeah, I mean, obviously they kind of have to make sure. He, it's not going to be Umbaktu's story. I'm sorry. Yeah, as no. much as I love Umbaktu, as much as you love Umbaktu, it's not going to be his story. Yeah. Yeah, no, the link you shared was from The Hollywood Reporter. So, I mean, yeah, it's not like we got this covered. Yeah, that's a real, that, that's one of the real people. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about it. I can't wait to see what they do. I know. Um, I, you know what I would really find fascinating is if they actually bring in uh, Chris Evans in old man makeup for it. Because there's this idea, it's like you know, you're you know you're you, you are from a super soldier serum. This is essentially what the heart shaped root is. How does that work? And he's like, I don't know. You have to ask Doctor Erskine about that. Or, or what if we're burying the lead? We're all worried about, you know, sure you're going to be Black Panther. Who's the, what villain is this guy going to play? What if they use this as the back door to introduce Fantastic Four? I mean, anything is possible. I mean, that's always the thing. Is like anything they, it's, it's not written yet. It's not shot yet. They can add anything. Ooh, you know what might be an interesting thing? Hmm. If they really want to go weird, they could just introduce MVP, Michael Van Patrick. And, um, <laughs> You know, just this crazy idea that, oh, actually, n- no, the way you become a super soldier is you just eat this all organic diet and you train and work out every day with these very specific exercises. And that's, that's how that works. You don't just grow it in a lab. Um, <laughs> Which is one of my favorite lines, especially because, of course, they had already cloned Michael Van Patrick at that point. Mm-hmm. Like, no, it's actually not as hard as you think. Um, I mean, would it be a cheat or an easy way out? But I mean, what if Shuri just kind of got a blood transfusion from Steve Rogers or something? I mean, yeah, well, that would be a definite cheat yeah. because it's a cheat. Um, yeah, yeah. It's also not the actual heart shaper. Honestly, I would love to see backstory about Erskine actually going to Wakanda. Oh. That's the real secret. It's like, oh, no, 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 you know, and like maybe even like, that would be the real interesting thing where you actually find out that Erskine went to Wakanda because he, he knew something was there. That's uh, how he figured, that's how he the uranium. That's how well, that's how he figured out the super soldier serum is like he, he made a synthetic copy of that herb. Exactly. That would be an interesting yes. tie in. And that's how we get to that point, you know. Mm-hmm. Although, like I said, I would love to see Tilda Johnson in it. I would love to see them embrace stuff from the Netflix universe, but we'll have to see what they decide to do. You know, uh, bridging the gap is always the complexity. Um, speaking of bridging the gap, did we talk about um, the new Spider Man issue? No, no, uh, no. Remember, we talked symbiote Spider Man, but yeah, we didn't talk yeah, that amazing Spider Man. So- I got to say, with Amazing Spider-Man, I know, and I know I'm wrong. Let me just preface it by by this. What I'm about to say is wrong. And it is not what's actually what they're going to do in the story. But I am not convinced that it is not Francis Clum, uh, the character from... um, You are convinced that's Francis Clum, right? I am. I... I let me put it this way. It's not that I'm convinced. I, I can I can look at all the data points and I can say, it, maybe I'm wrong. That there's knowledge that he probably shouldn't have. But I come back to that scene on the bridge where the Sparta women are tearing apart the bridge and then suddenly they're, they come out of it. Mm-hmm. And everyone's afraid of them. But clearly when we saw them, they were the super monster characters. 
they all had like sideways mouths and crazy tentacles, you know. Um, not quantum tentacles, but, you know, Mm -hmm. separate things that, you know, but that people were still afraid of them. Um, it implies to me that what we saw was what they saw, though they don't remember it. And that's where it gets, that's where it gets a little weird for me. It's like, you know, I can get that, oh, they saw this and this was, this was them being taken care of taking control of but then you think they'd remember that they were taking control of i'll, t- I'll tell you, know? you i'll tell you what seems weird when kindred takes off like i mean basically it looks like he has like you know like a zombie face but he takes it off and there's like a like a normal osborne face under there yeah and um, well yeah one of many osborne faces yeah because that's the thing i wasn't sure if that's supposed to be harry or norman well, again, I, the, the whole gotcha thing i mean back in the 90s before he died when he went nuts and became the green goblin again harry it was, uh, you know, he would do stuff to Peter and be like, gotcha, gotcha, tri-, you know, like, trick you, gotcha. Even, like, he left him a yeah. message after his death where, he, you know, he, where he explained, he's like, oh, yeah, I'm the, guy, I'm the guy, I'm the guy who put the idea in Chameleon's head for him to send uh, robot copies of your parents to Peter Parker to, me- you know, the mess with Spider-Man. Gotcha. <laughs> Which is weird yeah <laughs> yes. yeah yeah i mean but that's the thing but uh, and again this is where it gets into this weird quality of this this whole scene because of course you know when pete wakes up it and this is an interesting and and again this is one of these things that's like wait a minute <laughs> when we last saw francis Clum, you know dr strange was involved in that story too and it's sort of this sort of there's sort of a there does seem to be a misdirection involved in the story. Because the last episode we see with Doctor Strange, he goes into that mindscape. But mm-hmm. now it's all, oh, it's all decayed. What's this about? But he's not in the story that we see Peter waking up when, which seems to be that same dystopian mindscape. Yeah, but and- like I said, it's it's literally like a play-by-play of like the end of... One more, one more day in the brand new day. Yeah, after they make the deal with Mephisto, he wakes up in Aunt May's house exactly like that, and like it's basically yeah. almost word for word. Yeah, yeah, but at the same time, yeah, but that's the and thing. Again, this if, is- if it's Clum and he's not, he doesn't have mystical powers. Wouldn't Doctor Strange see through that? If Peter can't see through that, wouldn't Doctor Strange see through that? Doctor Strange hasn't met him yet. What here? Here's what Doctor Strange knows. Doctor Strange knows Peter made a deal with the devil. Yes. Fair enough. Doctor Strange knows Peter's mindscape is nuts. None of that implies that what we're seeing from Peter's perspective is actually related to the Doctor Strange story. So when you go back, because and this is the thing, is that the evil that men do, where Clum gets the Mysterio uh, outfit, is written by Kevin Smith. Um, the Death of Karen Page story, likewise written by Kevin Smith. Mm-hmm. If this guy's a huge Kevin Smith fan, somebody's like, wait a minute, this is an interesting thing. So here we have this guy pretending to be a mystical being to mess with the mind of someone else, He, pre- but it's actually Mysterio. And for what it's worth, it's entirely possible, as people are coming back from the dead regularly, you know, we don't know that Francis' brother didn't come back, too. Yeah. And, you know, deal with him and then sort of give him information, and then he gets all of the background information that he needed for when he was going to be Mysterio. Then he manipulates Mysterio to do what Mysterio does, and then it's like, it gets into this whole thing where it's like, no. I have been planning this for years because I have a weird superpower where I can teleport drugs into people, and people like drugs a lot. And they will give you lots of money if you can give them drugs at just the right dose, at just the right time. They will pay you through the nose for that kind of quality artisanal service. All right, you got me thinking now, and let me give you another clue. I think um, I think it might be the last issue. What is it, fifty five or something of this? Like the solicit says something like, "Oh, when this is over, you're never going to look at the Osbournes the same again." What if Peter and Mary Jane didn't make a deal with Mephisto? What if that was I don't know? What if that was like Harry Osborne from Hell messing with them or something? I, or maybe it was who? Kn- I mean. 
it's entirely... I don't know what we're going to think about the Osborns after this. Although, for what it's worth, what is it? it's an Avengers right now. We found out that, oh, actually, uh, Howard Stark was making deals with the devil. Wah! <gasps> so, no, the Osborns have been making deals with the devil this whole time. Too. Maybe, yeah, maybe Norman. Maybe Norman was in that circle with uh, Howard Stark. Maybe it's all Pizza Gate and uh, maybe it's all Pizza Gates down, and all of these super rich billionaires were all making deals with Mephisto. But wh- whether it's whether it's Flum or an Osborne, maybe someone else. Yeah, maybe it wasn't Mephisto because I don't think Mephisto's ever bragged about taking that marriage, and you know Mephisto loves to uh, brag. Mephisto has made references, or people we thought were Mephisto. Mm-hmm. Again, that's the thing. It's like, what is a Mephisto? True. You know, that's one of these things. Like, if you read um, the Patsy Walker Hellcat story when she comes back, and it gets into this whole thing about, is Satanish even a thing? Yeah. Or is he just an aspect of the dark dimension? And then later it's like, no, Satanish is a thing. That's just perception and observation and it's like oh wait no we perceived something and that plays into it and it goes into this and that's sort of the thing it's like one of the ideas i thought where it's like okay let's just take everything at face value and maybe what mary jane whispered in mephisto's ear is bring these people back to hmm I'll do this, but I'm not doing it for freaking Aunt May who's going to die of a heart attack in two weeks. Because I'm not stupid. Yeah, she got shot, but that woman should have been dead six years ago. Yeah, I mean, maybe it was Harry because I think the original plan, I forget where I heard this, I think someone in the Marvel office was like, oh, let's use this to bring back Gwen Stacy. And everyone was like, uh, someone was like, no, 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 we're not doing that. No, 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 no. (laughs) But maybe, or maybe that's how other things happen. You know, like, for example, maybe that's why Gwen Stacy exists in another universe, because, and that why she can, why she can travel between universes, because that's part of the deal. Mm. Maybe there's all sorts of things that are part of the deal. Like, maybe she's like, I want everyone that Peter has hurt to be able to come back, which maybe leads into why the chameleon could bring everyone back. Well, not the chameleon, the uh, jackal. Yeah. You know, maybe there's all sorts of things that Mary Jane asked for in that whisper. So I want to know what's going on because, but yeah, supposedly since Brand New Day, Harry Osborne's been alive. So it, was that faked? Was that some sort of imposter? Has he been biding his time? I was like, ugh. Or maybe. Oh to- man, you want to go on a deep dive in this? Oh boy, Clem has been Harry Osborne the whole time. <laughs> He's like, you know what? You know what would be a good thing to do, and and not for nothing, it doesn't impede Mephisto being a part of this. Because he can know, because that's the thing, we know that Me- that Mysterio came back from the dead. We know, because there was a whole thing in, I think it was, what was it, uh, during the Dark Avengers run, that there was this whole, all the villains get brought back from the dead, because why not have more villains? Because that seems practical in the short term. Because um, it's Osborne! Oh, that's what I was gonna say. I think I said it for when you said it might be uh, Mysterio. I mean, if it's if it's Clum was like, uh, you know, pretending to be Harry, Norman's gonna Norman's gonna kill him. Yeah, well, but that's the thing. But then again, it's just this idea of, and it's sort of this thing where if someone can teleport drugs into your body, yeah, that's the thing. It's like he has this weird superpower that is just perfectly. Th- perfectly so. it, it's sort of like you know but it's basically mind control by other means yeah i just wonder though if like they're gonna like you, you know they've kind of neutered norman right now because you know the sin eater you know kid him like he did a bunch of those villains now he's all like i'm sorry for everything i've done so i wonder if they've kind of done that to norman because they're gonna make harry like the big evil goblin now eh, anything's possible yeah. and honestly i i don't think you keep a good goblin down uh, oh yeah, no, no, no. Was his face falling off last week? I, it's it's so hard to keep track with Norman anymore. I mean, around in, in Amazing Eight Hundred, I mean, it, you know, he got well, or was it before that? He got cured of that Goblin Serum. But yeah, guess what? In the beginning of this thing, he takes the Goblin Serum serum again. Yeah, well, yeah, that's a whole other thing. Yeah, I remember. I remember. Yeah. the great Otto Octavius cures him of his Goblin. <laughs> And then he goes and gets his face all restructured 
Because uh, it, it, it yeah. which annoyed me because the whole thing was like, oh yes, they now they've never faced me when I was sane, and now I'm going to be a Lex Luthor type character. And I was like, eh, no, no one wants. Yeah, that, no didn't, wants. that didn't last. <laughs> No one wants Norman Osborn as Lex Luthor, and then they like had his face fall off and all sorts of nonsense. And, uh, it, I don't know. Yeah, no. Sometimes with Spider Man, you're like, man, is DC writing this book? <laughs> well, it gets kind of tricky when you get into like mystical stuff with Spider Man. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't think it should be that. That here's the thing: well, I don't think Spider Man having a tie to a mystical reality. Should be that difficult. No, but no, I think they're trying to write themselves out of a corner now because you know they how however long well, ago they they had to make to make a deal with the devil. And now it's like yeah, everyone's been complaining uh, for the last like thirteen years. Yeah, and he would never make a deal with the devil. Well, yeah, I mean, honestly, that was a bad idea. You was that your, no, that was uh, Joe Casada. No, no, Joe. Exactly. Come on, Joe. I mean, it's like your uh, your flagship character. I mean, the kid. I mean, the character you put on underwear and t shirts and everything. You have to make a deal with the devil. Yeah, that, that, uh. it's a. It was a bad idea, yeah. and just and it's the kind of idea that where you like you immediately know it's a deal with the devil. When does any human think? Like literally, the only person who was ever excited to make a deal with the devil was Samuel Stearns. Exactly. Because he thought he was smarter than the devil. And as it turns out, maybe he was when we get to uh, Immortal Hulk. Do you so, want to you know. go to Immortal Hulk? Let's go to Immortal Hulk real quick. Um, Number 40. Yeah, baby. I have a bunch of uh, Scotty Young covers. I don't know if anyone else did. Oh, but, um, now I know. Yeah. Uh, I like them. They're cool. Um, I, got, I got 70s Joe Fix-It on my cover. <laughs> oh, that's a good one, man. Uh I don't know if I'm like I don't know how I feel about body horror Hulk. That that's just a thing now. He just like falls. Yeah, he just like spits himself out. <laughs> yeah, it's just like what the hell now? It's I'm sorry. What the heck now? It, oh, but did but did you enjoy Doc Sasquatch? I like Doc Sasquatch. Um, just the idea of which is essentially. So essentially what we're establishing in this is you can jump into whoever's body as is available. As long as you go through their door, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, which also implies that She-Hulk has another door available, too. So there's... Oh, wow. She, Betsy, uh, she could come back as Betty Ross at some point. Ooh. So if Dan Walters ever does die, she can come back through Betty's door. If Betty decides she doesn't want to, I love Gyrich coming back. Uh, I was going to say you got Gyrich, you got Absorbing into Gyrick, this issue. Got yeah. Henry Peter Gyrich, I love Henry Peter Gyrich. Um, you got Carl Creel, Crusher Creel in this. We got, and I love my Creel. I love my, you know, what I love is Creel and Titania mm-hmm. just being a happy couple. I'm trying to find a good scene of that, but there's like several. And like Chris, like man, I already feel like too much of a cop. Quit, quit making me feel like a cop, you know. And it's and it's delightful because you know it feeds into this idea that Creel isn't Creel is who he's around, and Titania isn't a horrible person. They get into their own super villainous phases, and then after a while, they go like, "Wow, that was a weird phase I went through." Maybe we should, like, stop doing that and try to find a better way to live our lives, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I like Joe Fix in this. Uh, I don't know how I feel about the big Hulk thing fight at the end. Oh, that's coming up next it's, issue, yeah. Especially with Hulk looking, like, all, all sad and wan. Because if they just use this to say... Well, now we're gonna have the Hulk beat the thing again, because you know we book. let you beat him in, the, in your book. Now we're gonna fight you in this book. We're gonna beat you, even though we're clearly, you know, we're also gonna write the thing to be a jerk in this, instead of a guy who's like gonna understand, like, dude, what's going on, man? You look sick, so let's talk about this. I mean, but uh, I mean, for all, all his do. all his Ben Grimm knows is the Hulk broke out of custody. That's all he knows, you know. Well, I know he knows he, the Hulk broke out of custody, but at the same time, it's like. I hate when they dumb down the thing. Yeah. And not for nothing, broke out of custody. The thing is not some idiot who doesn't know that, oh, yeah, sometimes you're in custody for no good reason because you're a freaking monster, you know? 
Yeah, the thing knows what it's like to be a monster. Yeah, but remember, that doesn't mean he's not going to punch a monster for no reason. But he also, you know, I mean, but I mean, I don't know if it's, you remember the couple issues back, the leader made him explode. So it's like maybe you know Ben's just like you know, you, you know, maybe you, it's not in your control, but you're dangerous, and you know, I'm not going to say I'm not going to enjoy putting you back in your in your cell, but. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm, hey, I'm man. For better next issue. Here's what I'm gonna say. Too often when we get to this moment, it does degrade into this. It's clobbering time. Yeah, and like you said, it is the Hulk's book, so yeah, it's gonna be like, is the Hulk gonna? Yeah, I don't like to see the Hulk. I don't like. You know, it's not even that I don't want the fight. It's that I want the thing to be played better. Yeah, you know. I don't want the thing to be played poorly just because he's in the Hulk's book. And I think you, if you're going to write the Hulk, you should have respect for who Ben Grimm is. Just in the same way, if you're writing a thing book, you should have respect for who and what the Hulk is. I mean, unless maybe, unless Joe comes on and has a conversation with him, he's like, all right, Grimm, shut up. I know you're not dumb. I'm not dumb. Let, you know, let, let's talk about this. And I would love that. That is exactly where I want this to go. It's and a, I would love for them to just have a nice little say, Look, can we talk about this over a beer? It's like, okay, yeah, that's great. I know, I know a good spot right around the corner. I mean, did, did you did you see the letters page? The cover for next issue it looks like the two of them sitting at a table in a diner. Okay, well then there we go. So there we, it, I missed that image, and I should have caught it. And perhaps I was too upset, you know. But uh, oh well, okay. So there's two. There's this one, and I guess I saw this one. Oh well, there, like, there's, there's going to be like a King and Black tie-in issue that I don't think it's one of the regular issues. But yeah, but yeah, the oh, other, okay. the other, the next, the actual next issue is yeah, them sitting at that table. Yeah, yeah. See, this, this is the thing I want to see. Yeah. So yeah. So in that, great. It's Al. We um, might. It's Al. We, uh, we, we'll probably get that. Yeah. Oh, and oh, yeah. speaking of the thing having to fight two monsters, uh, let's talk. Fantastic Four. Yes. Number 26. I had the uh, Phoenix Namor variation, which is oh. kind of an annoying cover to me. Because first off, which one did you have? I think I got the regular cover. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's a cool cover. I like that. Yeah. But, yeah. What lies beyond the forever gate. <laughs> yeah. For those who don't know, they're doing lots of Phoenix. Who will get the Phoenix Force? And it's like, oh, Captain America Phoenix Force. Kind of interesting. Because that's coming up in the Avengers. Yeah. Namor has had the Phoenix Force. It's like, I know this. I don't really care to see it again. Especially because I don't like the idea of Namor with the Phoenix Force, because Namor is mentally unstable. (laughs) Um, (laughs) I like the whole man thing subplot here at the start. Oh, yeah. You see him grab somebody by the head. I don't know if he tries to burn him, but it's Johnny, so it's like, hey, 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 Ted, what's up? Hey Ted, what's up? which I love, and I also just love that he doesn't know. Ted. He's calling him Ted, but he doesn't know Ted. He doesn't. He just. He just doesn't know the man thing. He's just like, Nah, Ben told me about him. Is he just trying to and be all, like, I'm not afraid of you. Hi, I'm, you know my buddy. And then you get this. I don't. I don't know how I feel about the Valeria and her her avatar prince. Oh yeah, because she got. She actually. Figures out how to control the portal. She goes to visit that prince, and he's got all these. Uh, well, you know, and then she says, like, "I'm sorry, this is my culture." And yeah, that's what, what he we says. Yeah. We, have, we have six hearts. That's room for six people to love. You know. I, I mean, again, too. I mean, if it's a fair polyamorous relationship, then each of those six concubines has six husbands as well. You know. I well, I mean, I guess Valeria didn't know that was the deal. I got you know. Well, in which case, she really didn't know him at all, did he? No, did and she? it was puppy love. Which, you know, she's a teenager. And, yeah, and for real, it's like you're a teenage girl who fell in love with a guy with good abs. Yeah, I mean, so, I mean, she's she might be one of the smartest people on the planet, but again, it's like she's a teenage girl, you know. Yeah. Might be her yeah, first, true, true, true. first true, puppy true, love. True. Yeah. But they leave the gate open. So, and there, oh, so, okay, so plot line here we have. Okay, here's the big thing I wanted to ask you about, the whole Franklin thing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the Franklin thing was beautiful, honestly. Well, no, Professor X. Oh, you no, you were never a mutant. Yeah, well, and exactly because what it was was you wanted to be something, and so you became something. Okay, so I'm confused here. Maybe you can clarify this for me. So he's not a mutant, but he was born with his powers? So Franklin's better than you is basically what the plot line is. And what it is, it is for what it really comes down to is... It's not so. 
And it's just, honestly, what this is, is the subtle racism of mutant hood. Oh. I was just like, oh, is it the, is it just Xavier's like, oh, I can't use you anymore, so get lost? Well, I mean, honestly, Xavier is basically a mushroom at the moment, so. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, but you know what you I was thinking? Not, that's not Xavier. That's a mushroom that thinks it's Xavier. Much like Ted Salas is a pile of goo that thinks it's Ted Salas. Although, in, 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 uh, in the Man Thing's defense, it's a pile of goo that doesn't know it's Ted Salas, but might have some relationship to Ted Salas. All right. Again, I, something that, that Marvel did better than um, Alan Moore ever did I, years I, later. I did have a no prize answer if you if they did want to work around where Franklin isn't a mutant. Mm-hmm. All right. He was born with his powers. Okay. But remember, the pregnancy was very, you know, didn't Ben, ben, ben Reed and Johnny have to go into the negative zone? And didn't they yeah. have to bring out the cosmic control rod? And they bring up the cosmic control rod. So yeah, he was exposed to all kinds of cosmic. So I'm saying maybe, maybe genetically he wasn't going to have powers, but somehow from he got bombarded with negative zone energy, and you know that's where his powers came from. Well, I mean the 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 counter argument is he was supposed to have powers that would have been a essentially essentially the argument is is that had he been born without the cosmic control rod. His powers would have destroyed all of the world, but it, perhaps but, all of reality. And again, too, yeah, was he going to be born with powers because his parent, both his parents' DNA was altered in that cosmic ray storm? So isn't that yeah. the, isn't that the definition of a mutant? Well, it, it is. Again, it's honestly, I don't take anything current Krakoa mutants say. I guess. As canon, and in this in in this actual book, and in the Juggernaut book, there's this whole thing about how you know when when Franklin tries to talk to Leech and Artie about Krakoa, mm-hmm. they're like, eh, yeah, "That sounds stupid." Uh, <laughs> you know, they're they're not like, "Oh, great, let's go to Krakoa where we can be." Part of that group that didn't want us when they knew we were mutants. But I mean, I mean, I mean, it's either it's either one of two things. It's either like Xavier's lying or Slot's a bad writer because it's like, uh, okay, I get it that Franklin used whatever power to make himself a mutant almost. But would it Reed have figured that out or Valeria? And again, this goes to, as I've said, the basic psychological quality of the G particle which is established, which I think is a fair cop. Mm. And this idea that, you know, the reason Ben can't transform back and forth is because he knows if he transforms back and forth, Mm -hmm. it's going to take a psychological toll on him. And what the, what the, what the uh, future foundation understood and what they aren't telling Ben is that you can change back whenever the heck you feel like Mm -hmm. it does. But, you will only do it when we give you a ritual. And that ritual has to be something that makes you feel like you don't have control. Basically, unless we tie you up and shoot you with some kind of cosmic ray or give you a placebo to drink, you are not going to transform because you are so afraid of what having two different existences would mean for you. Okay, I'm dumb. Where does Franklin's powers come from if he's not a mutant? Franklin's power no well he's not a mutant he's he's well I, here's the thing it's like what is a here's the thing I, what the, I, I thought the so, definition so of a mutant you, let me tell you let me no let me give you from the handbook of the Marvel Universe and the supervillain Solar who apparently was a mutant but only developed his latent mutant ability when his car broke down in the desert and he had to walk under the hot blazing sun for 12 hours and established enough solar energy to start having solar energy powers. Well, I thought that was the definition of a mutant is it's like, yeah, your powers don't come out in day one, It's it, it, but you're born with it in your DNA and it either comes out during puberty or some traumatic accident or something. But it's, well, it's in I your, mean, that's it's what they in, tell themselves. Yeah. But as we know, so here's the thing. As any good reader of any Sentinel-based story will tell you, as the Master Mold saw, every human is a mutant. Mm -hmm. The X gene is in every human. 
It is just a question of whether it is active or not. And to give you a fun a fun gag in the whole thing, it's not that that Franklin isn't a mutant anymore. It's that he made himself not be a mutant, and that altered the reality so that now Professor oh. Xavier has to say he's not a mutant. That bought, I buy that, yes. Because it's like, no, you alter reality by your whim. You are the Beyonder, Franklin. Oh, God, so that's going to be a fun That's time. true. That's right. Because, yeah, even though those aliens show up, they're like, oh, you are God. And even Ricky Barnes, you created my world and everyone I know. <laughs> exactly. It's like, oh, good, but I'm not a God anymore. It's like, well, that doesn't help. And they're going to have the Griever come back. I don't like the Griever. I'm going to be honest. I know. I, I know. I read that last page. I was kind of like, eh. Her back? Yeah, the, the, the problem with the Griever is, are you an elder of the universe, or are you, are you an esoteric concept? Yes. If you're an esoteric concept, you shouldn't be relishing in the things you do. If you're an elder of the universe, then you're just some old person who is kind of doing powerful. stuff. Yeah, through tech, and it's like no one cares about you. Yeah, I mean, and I, I could care less either way about her. <laughs> yeah, she is a very poorly written and designed character. I, I, I was more intrigued with the return of Elijah. No, Elijah is awesome, and honestly, the the whole well, okay, so here's all the people I've stopped. Um, Here's all the ladies I've stopped, stopped. Here's all the ladies I've stopped, Christ, stopped. Crystal, her sister. <laughs> yeah, you know, Elijah, but I thought it was my friend's girlfriend at the time. Yeah, she was this guy yeah, says, Alicia, like, what? <laughs> and this guy's like, what, what? It's like, which is kind of like, it's like, dude, you know you're marrying someone from a complete, which is a nice bookend to Valerie's story, Valeria's story where she met someone from a different culture. Mm -hmm. And she thought that it was this thing that she understood in her culture. But it, it was not in any way. And then here's Sky, who in very much is in Valeria's perspective, where she is an innocent. She doesn't even know that you can just travel to other planets like super fast in this universe. It's like, yeah. it's like oh, so I could go back to my home planet with this gate? It's like, Dude, we could just take a rocket ship there. It'll be faster than it's going to take us to get back to New York from Florida. You know, it's like once we get out into space, it's like super fast. We can go fast. We can get there, no problem. Um, and it's just like, oh, you don't know anything, do you? So, and so, what you're saying is, Florida is more the final frontier than space is. Well, <laughs> it is accessible. Oh. Um. Uh, and I mean, no. I mean, everyone always laughs at Johnny and makes fun of Johnny and, you know, it's like, oh, the Elijah thing. But it's like, I mean, basically, isn't Elijah a rapist? I mean, she slept with him for I how mean, many years under false pretenses? Okay. It, it comes into the question of is false pretense, ra is, false, is false pretense sexual intercourse rape if it's over numerous? Would, would, would he have slept with her to begin with if he had known who she was? Well, I mean, that's the, that's a complex question because she was who she was. Yes. At no point did she present herself as anything other than a woman who knows what she knows, who talks about what she talks about, who likes what she likes, and is working as a blind... I mean, you could argue, well, you really weren't blind. Yeah. And uh, then you could say, oh, well, you, she really wasn't blind, and that's a lie. But that's, you know, I mean, honestly, yeah. I, I get what you're saying, and yeah, I yeah. do get the idea. I'm not willing to say that Johnny Storm was raped. Yeah. Just because. I mean, I'm uh, not, and I'm not saying he never, he didn't fall in love with her. Eventually, he did fall in love with her. I'm just saying. Well, maybe exactly. It it's like, in the beginning. I think at that point in the relationship, it gets to be this question of, are you being manipulated or are you going along with it? And, you know, when it comes to a character like Elijah, because even when he, when Elijah is revealed to him, he sticks it out with her for a while. Yeah. Yeah. 
You know, it's not like it's like, oh my gosh. You know, he doesn't. It, to, to put it simply, he does not have the trauma of rape. Yeah. He has a technical definition that someone could say he was raped, and that is a fair concept that he might want to explore in a psychological uh, deconstruction if we can get a decent psychiatrist back in the Marvel Universe, since we don't have one currently, since Doc Samson is now did, did a heel turn. Oh. And, uh, and it's yeah. like, Johnny and poor Alicia, I mean, Johnny kind of knows, you know, her every intimate detail. Well, you know, I mean, the thing with, and of course, well, even more, it's like uh, Ben's, Ben and Alicia's now daughter, knows all the details of it so it's oh, like yeah. you know that's a weird thing it's like yeah i know exactly what my uncle's penis looks like not in a bad way but oh, it's just something i know oh that's true, part of true. Our lore. yeah yeah that's our lore and i have to live with it because which again shows how much how how much abuse was visited on these children oh yeah of ben and uh and Delisha, which again explains why they're freaking attacking people on the street. That was because... so funny, though. I was gonna, you were gonna blast him with the power washer. I had it on maximum. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, he's doing what he can do. He's, he's, he's honestly, uh, it's a mess. But um, I'm interested in where we go with that. I mean, honestly, I would rather not have the griever. And honestly, just the idea of okay, is the gear behind you? He's like, yeah, she's right behind me. Okay, turn off the, turn it off, <laughs> scatter her atoms throughout e- eternity. That's fine. We're good with that now. He's <laughs> like, no, we can't turn it off. If we turn it off, that'll whoever's in transit will be destroyed. Plus, I thought they couldn't shut it down, or did Valeria figure that out? No, well, yeah, Valeria. Well, you can like change the channel now. Yeah, I was gonna say shut her somewhere else. Well, exactly. Well, that's the idea, and I'm sure that's something they'll do later. But, um, or they'll just defeat the Griever because it, now she's got all the alien races now. Like, we're going to kill you because we don't know what you are. You're not an esoteric concept because you're using technology. If you're using technology, you must be an elder of the universe. If you're an elder of the universe, you are supremely defeatable. <laughs> I mean, no, really. It's like, what are you? Are you an elder of the universe or are you an esoteric concept? And everything about her seems to say she's uh, an, uh, an elder of the universe, but she acts like she's an esoteric concept. Yeah. So in that sense, it's like, you're not, an, you're not you are just an elder. She's fancy. Okay. You're an old lady from the dawn of time. You have a lot of super space tech. <laughs> We're going to shoot you with a laser gun. And that calls, we're going to call it a day. Because if you don't got an infinity stone and the esoteric concept of death has not promised not to take you to death, you're just some lady. So, sorry, lady. We'll call it a day. Do um, you want to talk to Captain America? Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, I got one more. Cap 25, yeah. Uh, you know, Tanahasi Coates was on um, Colbert, this, not Colbert, um, Daily Show this week. Oh, yeah? Yeah, and I cannot tell you how mad it makes me that every time someone interviews ta Coates, Coates, no one mentions Captain America. I think... No you, one mentions Black Panther. And it's like, dude... I forget... I forget are you how ashamed they, of this all? I forget how, how they described him. Yeah, they, when they did that, when uh, Chadwick Boseman died, like, they were... they. You know, they did the spec. They uh, ABC. They played Black Panther. And then they had a special, and they interviewed a bunch of people. And yeah, they interviewed Chadwick Boseman he, or, or um, Ta-Nehisi Coates because he, he knew him. And it's and yeah, I forget what they how they described him. It was either like a reporter or something or writer or something. But yeah, no mention of comic books. I'm like, you're talking about a guy who played a Marvel character, and you're not saying this guy actually wrote the Black Panther comic. And he's writing Captain America now. I know, but it's like there was no mention the of comics. Captain America. I'm like, and it's like. I'm like, you're talking about the guy who played Black Panther. You're not going to mention this guy wrote the Black Panther comic and kind of tie it in? Yeah. I mean, and granted, he didn't, you know, maybe they wanted to, you know, they wanted to keep some of that that, that mystique for Stan. I, I can get that. But at the same time, it's just like... Just put it at the bottom of the screen, you know? Yeah, you know. I said, there, like, what, there was is, this, he the current writer, is he the current writer on Black Panther? Uh, is that book still going? I don't. I don't know. No, no, no Black Panther's still going because I thought like the last Tanahasi Coates Black Panther is coming out soon. 
Um, yes, yeah, as far as I as far as I know, yeah, if it's it's if it's yeah, going, yeah and it's, it's like you know, and that he's writing Captain America, which I think is, you know, and it's not to be rude about it, but it's like Captain America is a to me, I mean, to me, he's the bigger deal. He's like the older character. He's the more established character. He's he's Marvel Superman, if you will. Maybe not in sales, but at least in 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 ethos. And he is, and here's what I'm going to say. It's not like he's writing Captain America as a, well, I guess I gotta. He is crushing Captain America as a writer. Oh, yeah. Here, I I just looked it up. Yeah, the Black Panther book's been on, like, a long break, I guess. Uh, It never came back after... um, After COVID. After COVID, but now they're saying the next issue's going to be out, like, in February. So, yeah, almost 11 11 months. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, but that's the thing is like even right there, even right there, even within Tanahasi Coates's character as a celebrity, to say the current writer of Black Panther, or even like when they did that special, just put it at the bottom of the screen, Marvel writer. Well, like, well, I mean, you can say author, you know, reporter, writer of Black Panther. Yeah, you know, I mean, I think honestly, that's. I don't know why you're not. You know, that's what it comes down to, is I don't know why you're not. I don't, and I, it's it just, it's an annoyance to me. Because I, mean, I would love to see and I, Ta-Nehisi Coates talk about when I'm approaching Captain America. I have to look at this idea of what if I was a blonde-haired, blue-eyed, six-foot-two white guy, but I was also a kind-hearted person who was woke? How how would I be that person? How can I yeah. describe this person who is from the forties, who lived through actual segregation, but who never really had the mindset of, you know, don't give me that 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 stuff. Don't tell me these people are lesser than me. These people are, you know, what? Do, how do I how do I write? How do I write a person from the 40s who was super woke in the 40s um you know but sitting I, next to gabe jones and eating with his utensils because he was dang hungry at the time and isn't acting like that's the end of the world you know but i just don't understand how like in any interview he does especially like tv or something if like why disney wouldn't like you know kind of ask him hey can you mention you're writing captain america hey can you mention Black i Panther? kind of get the feeling that it's tanahasi maybe he just, he just doesn't want to admit he writes comic books for him. maybe it's a reverse stan lee huh it's like he's like oh i don't want to say let people know i write comic books for a living i don't know it bugs me and it's a it's a small bug but he could help them because it's like you know you watch this interview and if you're like hey this is like a well-spoken intelligent man and he's writing captain american black panther man i don't want to check this out i mean this is a smart guy i mean yeah i mean you know it's there's a lot of factors. I mean, into it. I mean, I and could, maybe maybe it's expressly because I could, I, 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 I could see a few years ago maybe saying you didn't want to write comics, but now with like the success of the MCU, there's so many co- like superhero yeah. fans out there now. I understand. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I uh, and again, maybe that's maybe that's him too. I guess is he doesn't. You know, I mean, not for nothing. He is. He exists in a very high spot, and it's sort of one of those things where you know you say you know. As it turns out, you know, when you say someone is well spoken, as if it was an oddity, that is, you know, sometimes seen as a weird thing. Let's face it, you know, racial dynamics in this country are messed up. I mean, I mean, I don't. I, no, I'm not even saying that. I'm. Sa- no, no, I understand. Charlie what Esser, you're Charlie saying. Esser, I'm, I'm saying. saying there's a, there's like 50 percent in the country that's not well spoken. Okay, so. Uh, no, fair enough. I mean, how, heck, I was, I'm not that well spoken. I mean, I mean, and you said he was on the, the Daily Show. I mean, half those celebrities that do those talk shows aren't deep thinkers. That's what I'm saying. You say, hey, here's, a, no, here's an I, author. Well, I, I guess, I I guess my thing is, here's what I'll say. When Colbert was hosting the, here, here's what, I mean, I guess maybe it's even a point that maybe, uh, Trevor Noah doesn't read comics. Mm. Like, like Colbert, I know, would make that a point of the interview. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like Colbert, and maybe that's why I haven't seen him on Colbert recently. It's like, oh man, Colbert's going to have to be like about Cap, and I don't want that. To yeah, be my legacy. Yeah, because I mean, which I get too. It's like it's this idea. I built myself up, and I'm in a spot. It's sort of like Kevin Smith. He built himself up as a film producer, 
and now he writes comic books. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes. too. Um, you know, when when he has, you know, when he gets around to it. But um, for Kevin Smith, it's sort of like a cherry on his Sunday, and I and I can see how maybe Tana Hasen Coates maybe doesn't want to finish his Sunday yet. But can't you, you just know, like, like list Kevin all- Smith? He's like, yeah, my man, my Sunday's done. I just put that cherry on top. But I'm gonna write some. It's just like list all your credits. Put comic books at the bottom. You know, but you know, not everybody. See, you, see, you know, and this is what's fun about talking about this is the more I talk about it, the more like, oh, I kind of see his point now. It's like he doesn't want that to be his definition. And I get what you're saying. I get what everyone else is saying, including myself five minutes ago. Um, yeah, but, it, but I mean, I'm also like, oh wait, maybe he just is like. Yeah, but you it's, know what? it's not the 80s or 90s. A quick Google search will tell you he's writing Black Panther and Captain America. Well, yeah, and that's fair enough. If you want to look it up, that's fine. It's it's listed somewhere else, but he doesn't want that to be the legacy when he wants to talk about things. Unless he's there on a tour for Captain America, which I'm sure he did like at the time Captain America came out. And then he's like, no, I did my tour. I'm done with that tour. I'm I'm continuing to do the work because it's good money and I like the character and I like writing the stories. They're great stories. But right now we're talking about other things and I don't want and, and I get, you know and, I mean and I, and I, get what, I mean not for nothing not for nothing just to make an obvious point in this. Now that I think about it, it's like oh man, maybe he's sitting there thinking, man, I do not want Captain America sales to tank if people realize a black guy's writing it. That there may be a lot of people reading this book who don't know that it's currently written by a black guy. And he's like, you know, I mean, any number of things could be at play here that he is dealing with. Yeah, but I not- mean, yeah, but I mean, it's not Joe Smith's name on the cover either. You know, it's not a pseudonym or no. anything. But again, I get, I get all your points. I respect his choices, but it's like, I mean, the industry's hurting right now. I mean, they, we could use a spokesman, a well spoken spokesman, you know. Anybody, any of you, any of these writers that can get on TV should be like, oh, hey, guess what I'm writing? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, every, all of them should be doing more press. Um, but then again, you know, you don't get paid for press. So it's like, that's no, a lot but, of time. No, of but, no but maybe you sell a couple more uh, issues. Yeah, or you sell a few less issues, which is the other concept, you know. It's like you don't want to go on, on online and, you know, you never want to say something stupid when you're online either. It's like... You know, because you say something that suddenly gets controversial. And for what it's worth, ta Coates, he is a controversial I, writer. Yeah, but I think... And he, God bless Marvel for saying, you know, hey, you can write just a Captain America story, can't you? I, it's like, yeah. It says, can it be political? It's like, sure, Captain's always political. He punches Nazis all the time. But I think he... I think he's he's a, punch a Nazi, and then we we're totally cool. He's a smart enough writer. He's good with words. I don't think they're going to trick him into saying anything he doesn't want to say. You imagine that, but he's going on a show. Ah, true, true. You know, that's the thing. They're going to give him questions, and he doesn't always know what the question is going to be. And if nothing else, you know, I'm sure he's, in order to get him on the show, you get that list of questions. Here's the questions he'll talk about. Here's what he'll answer. And if you're going to try and give him a gotcha question, you just give a gotcha question to a comic book writer. But, you know, it's okay. like, oh boy, everyone thinks you're Woodward and Bernstein now. It's like so, so what was he on there to talk about if he wasn't on there to talk about comics? Honestly, it was just about the world as it exists and um okay. <laughs> he just has a book out, I can't remember what it's called, but basically Oprah Winfrey and Brad Pitt are developing it into a movie. And he's taking the kind of 52 pickup view, which is like, hey, great to talk to you. And great. that you want to make a movie out of my thing? Thanks for the check. And we'll see where it goes from there. Um, Do you think that, actually, is that another thing maybe that like with this book, he owns most or all the rights. But with Marvel, he doesn't own that. He doesn't own Captain America. He doesn't own Black I mean, Panther. Well, obviously he doesn't, yeah. you know. But, you know, I would think it's a – here's the thing. As and. I guess maybe that's the more complex question is, I don't know if he sees comic books as a feather in his cap. Like Kevin Smith, every comic book he writes, that's a feather in his cap. To him, that's living the dream. For Ta-Nehisi Coates, it may be like, uh, no, it's cool, man. I'm I'm lucky that they want me. I'm glad to write these interesting complex stories. I appreciate the characters and what you can do with them. You know, but it's not necessarily something that when I was a kid, 
reading and writing as a kid, you know, that this was, oh man, someday maybe I'll write Captain America or I'll write the Falcon or I'll write yeah. Black Panther. Maybe I'm just, know? maybe I'm just naive and I love comics too much, but I, it's, it's just nothing else. Don't you think you want to get the message out? Oh yeah. Look, I, I put out consistent writing and good work every month and, you know, maybe some TV show sees that and be like, oh, hey, this guy can stick to his schedule. He can get, you know, scripts or whatever. And, you know, yeah. maybe we should hire but this then, guy. Yeah, it's, it's this question of, does he want to do TV? Maybe. Yeah. You know, that, that's the thing. That's it, just the first thing like, that came to mind. But, you know, maybe he gets six different pitches for six different things. And, you know, he's like, oh, I yeah. like this one. I mean, it really comes down to that question of does he, you know, does he want to be um, Jordan Peele? You know, does he want to be this guy who's in the business, you know, moving a lot of is it? It's yeah, it's Jordan Peele, right? He's the producer. He's the guy. So. On, um, I, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. Oh, we get those. <laughs> they called Key and Peel, man. It's hard to keep them. You know, anytime I still don't know who Abbott, who which one is Abbott and Costello. So Laurel and Hardy confounded me for years. Which one's which? Um, I eventually had a mnemonic device that said Hardy was the fat guy. So because Hardy means a hearty meal. So um, anyway, um, but yeah, it's it's yeah, but you know. Um, uh, Jordan Peele is in that place right now where he gets to tell what stories he wants to, gets to build out what universes he wants to. Um, and that's a lot of work for Jordan Peele. And, you know, you know, that may not be where, that not, may not be the path that Tallahassee Coast wants to go down. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want to be known in that way. So fair enough. I just wish they would make the mention of it because I, I like Captain America. I want people to mention the things that I like when they're being interviewed, when I know you're in that thing. So say that you're in that thing. And again, the whole comic industry could use the help. Uh, well, yeah, that definitely. And I'm sure if they would pay him for the uh, appearances, he would talk. Oh, you want me to pitch that? Yeah, okay. That's that's 50 bucks. 50 bucks for a half hour, 100 for a, two, for a full hour. So... Um, yeah, so that's that. But, um, what do you think of the actual issue? The actual issue, which I've already dropped, um, I liked it, but it is such a stark jump between the end of the issue and then the start of the backup. Mm, yeah. Where you don't even realize, at least I didn't realize, that, it, that the backup was a separate story. Yeah, 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 I know. It just gets very weird. It just it? goes to the end of it. Which is, you know, doesn't say to be and continued. And we have or... to be willing to sacrifice ourselves. Um, although, man, I just want to do this toss out that Rebecca Barnes comes back in Fantastic Four and starts flirting with Franklin. Well, maybe not flirting with Franklin, but yeah. it's like, wow, you're like God in my universe. Yeah. Like, yeah, I get that a lot. Um, it, it's kind of interesting with Rebecca or Rick. Yeah, Rick. Yeah. Oh, R Ricky, Ricky Martin. Well, I think it's short for Rebecca. But yeah. Maybe, yeah, because but I know they were calling her Ricky because I don't know if they wanted to do a when they first started to do a combo of you know Rick Jones and Bucky Barnes. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was the original thing she was. Uh, but then, and that's the thing is that this particular R Barnes, if we will, has been through different iterations where she has yep. also been the 1940s Bucky Barnes as well. With with again to tie into cat, you know, it's like. Peggy Carter, Captain America. You know, it's like, oh, and now she's back in Town Hasi Coast, and we're not even going to talk about that. I mean, to me, I guess maybe the deepest level is I kind of think that they don't mention it because, man, we got so many things, so many bowls in the air. I can't say anything right now because we got something that's going to shock you. You're like, what? It was, it was Francis Crumb the whole time? I did not see that coming. Anyway. Yeah, but um, no, I mean it's it's a good story. It's it's a very and they give all this weird backstory where apparently um, the uh, what's her name, um, Lucan's wife. Oh yeah, apparently oh, alive in the forties. Yeah, it was part of the Russian resistance, which is one of these things we realize. Oh, she's like some kind of weird eternally long young sorceress, and her wedding to Lucan was its own power play itself. So it's a big reveal there. 
and then Peggy coming back. Although, again, I hope it is the Peggy from the Ultimate Universe where she got the Super Soldier Serum, because I think that's a better story. But maybe they're just going to not really ever explain it. And then it's going to be headcanon that that's who she was. Yeah, I don't know, because, yeah, in the flashbacks, they show her, yeah, with, you know, Steve as Caps. I don't know. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they also make the point that it was never really anything serious between them. No, nah, just like a fling, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know, which... It is interesting whatever the heck it is they're setting up. So, um, I'm... And again, this is the thing. It intrigues me. It, it attracts me in. The backup story, well, you didn't realize what it was until until you're like, I would do it. And it's like, oh, that's something else. Is a really nice... Um, story about Cap befriending an immigrant when he came to this country. And it's just your basic SJW, social justice warrior, which is what Cap freaking is. Because why would you be opposed to social justice? If you had powers and you could fight for things, wouldn't social justice be something you would fight for? It's like, especially if your name was freaking Captain America, would you be like, no, I want less justice in the society. That's what I fight for. That's well, I mean, not what Captain America should fight for. He says it again in this issue, and I know he's, he said it before. He's like, I don't fight for a country, a president, or a flag. I fight for the dream, you know, that everyone could have this dream. Exactly. And you know what? Doesn't, he doesn't care that, well, you know, the founders didn't intend for the dream to go to everybody. It's like, who the F cares what the founders thought? The founders didn't the know founders anything. The founders Star Trek were a bunch of shapeshifters. We don't want to deal with them. You, th- you think we they want to deal with what our reality is right now? You think you think the founders knew cell phones were coming? No. Well, I mean, who know who knows what they knew what was coming? Here's what I'll say: You can say anything about any founding father. Say, well, he was a brilliant man. He would have understood that eventually guns would shoot more bullets. It's like, yeah, but even then, first off, first off, all that kind of thing about guns might one day shoot more bullets. They also, if you're going to go down that road, you have to say, well, yes, and they also had no respect for the common man. So they would not have wanted the common man to have a gun that shot a bunch of bullets. Yeah, they are slaves. I mean, come on. Exactly. It's like, you know, those guys definitely can't have a gun with more than one bullet. Um, you know, it's like no matter how you slice it, you can't fit our modern world into their world. Exactly. You have to just take the ideas and ideals. And, you know, this is what is true. Of, as, this is something I've always said. America is not a a democracy or a republic. We are a secular theocracy. We have a set of sacred writings called the laws and the constitution that are interpreted by high priests called judges in the Supreme Court. And that discussion of interpretation is what our governance is. Oh, but, oh, but hey, to bring it back to this issue, because we are going long, did you see? did you see the cover for next issue? What's the next issue? Two words. Oh, Red Hulk. Red Hulk. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know which Red Hulk that is. So, I, was I, gonna say, that. I was gonna say, is Ross gonna get his groove back? Because Ross was in this issue. Yeah, Ross is in this issue. So yeah, maybe it's Ross. He went through the red door. Oh look, they could they intentionally uh keep his face in shadow so you can't see if he has a mustache or not. <laughs> well, there is another red hulk. I, that's what I'm saying. Isn't that the guy with the that mustache? Doesn't have a mustache, so that's what I'm saying. Ross didn't have a mustache as Hulk, that other guy did. Oh, so. that's right. That's, that's what right. I'm saying. Oh, Do they keep his face dark so you can't tell which red hulk that's gonna or be? Or maybe it's just a completely new red hulk. It's red hulk. It's Lucan is the red hulk. It's red skull hulk. Did somebody Watch out. Oh no, did somebody walk through Ross's green door? Yeah. <laughs> uh. Who knows? <laughs> <sighs> the green doors. But we've already established that some of them are red, and they have brown ones too. That Madman was brown. So, um, <sighs> and sometimes they're gray. So, wh- where's the gray door? Maybe we should all walk through the gray door. Let's call that a night. Uh, Philip, anything else you want to talk about tonight? No, I think we covered a lot tonight. <laughs> covered way more than we should have. Um, and you know what? If you heard it all, I'm glad. I'm glad you appreciate it. I'm glad you listened to it. If you are having trouble hearing us, it is probably because you're using cheap dollar store headphones to listen to us. So I'm going to give you this advice. Go right now to tweakedaudio.com. Use the coupon code SOUTHGATE. Get a discount on those high-quality headsets that you can buy right now. 
Likewise, take that coupon code Southgate. Go over to HuntedKiller.com. Use it there. Get a discount on their wonderful games and puzzles to solve. If you're an intellectual person and like to solve puzzles, that would be a good thing for you. Using that coupon code Southgate to get the discount. And then if none of that interests you, go down to our show notes. Click on the Amazon link. Go to Amazon. Buy whatever you like. And while you're there, if you're interested, buy Pod Life the book, the book written uh, by uh, the folks here at Southgate Media Group, which tell you how podcasting has saved their lives and made them better people. And maybe it'll work for you, too. So go pick up Pod Life the book. It's available in hard copy. It is available in digital download. And it may soon be available in audiobook as well. Rob's working on that. Um, he'll get back to us. <laughs> and that's great. And if not, just use that uh, link in our notes and go to Amazon and buy whatever the heck you want. I don't care. It's not our problem at that point. And <laughs> must is, Charlie. In the meantime, Philip, if they would like to contact you, how can they do so? Uh, the easiest way to contact me or any of our team is uh, email capesandlunatics at gmail.com or call the voicemail 614-382-2737. That's 614-38-CAPES. And find links to all of our social media, links to all of our stuff at uh, linktree, L-A-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash capesandlunatics. And, of course, if you'd like to write to me in that old-fashioned email way, the way our Mars and Paz once did, do so at superconnectivityblog at gmail.com. That's superconnectivityblog, all one word, at gmail.com. And, of course, follow me on the Twitter as I live tweet, hopefully, when I remember and I'm not exhausted, at 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, DuckTales, a woo at Charlie Esser, that's C-H-A-R-L-I-E-S-S-E-R. Look for the two E's in the middle. For quality. Bing! Thank you, Maz. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that has been another episode of Super Connectivity. I hope that you have been properly connected. And if not, come back next week and we will super connect you once again. Good night. Good night. All right. Hooray! That worked out well. Oh, yeah. I love you. Like, half an hour. We'll do half an hour. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. Hey, hey. Ta-Nehisi Coates. Fantastic Ta-Nehisi Four. Coates, he's, he's an enigma wrapped in a riddle tied up in a mystery.